Nation of Fit and 10, welcome to day 43, the first day of the final four weeks. And uh, I sent your numbers out if you don't already know. I just sent them out maybe about an hour ago. And uh, so please have a look. There is a fiber requirement now, okay? So a daily minimum fiber requirement. You've all been already getting fiber every day. Maybe you're already hitting that requirement. If you're eating real whole foods, you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, maybe some grains and that type of thing, uh, you are going to probably get that fiber minimum, no problem. And if you go over your fiber, no problem. But I just want you to try to get that minimum. All right? So for a lot of you or some of you, you're probably already there. Maybe all of you, I don't know. Probably not all of you, but probably a lot of you are already at that minimum, okay? Um, but have a look in, uh, in my fitness pal when you enter in everything, look on your, on your nutrients tab and you'll be able to see, uh, how much fiber you're having per day. Now I have had the question, where does fiber fall within macros? Well, fiber is a type of carbohydrate and there's basically two, two kinds of fiber. There's soluble and insoluble. And, uh, soluble fiber tends to go just right through you. Insoluble fiber is a little bit different. There's many kinds of different uh, soluble fibers. And the long and the short of it is, we probably wouldn't really count it, or we might count maybe let's say half the calories of soluble fiber against our total calorie count. It's a little bit, you know, to be honest with you, I will tell you straight up, I don't really know, but from all the reading I've done, on average, you get about two calories per gram of in, sorry, of soluble fiber. Okay. In terms of calories uh, ascribed to um, insoluble fiber, the fiber that runs right through you, it's zero, right? Because it's just running right through you. You're just excreting it. So basically the long and the short of it is fiber as a whole, and I'm not going to have you worry about soluble versus insoluble for now. Just don't worry about that. I'm never going to have you worry about it. It's kind of free, but for the sake of ease, it's gonna be part of your carbohydrate count. So let's just keep it there, keep it easy. It will go against your carbohydrate count, but really in essence, very little of it actually really goes against your carbohydrate count, right? Because as I mentioned, insoluble goes right through you and soluble, we're maybe getting uh, maybe half of that as actual um, energy intake to the body. Um, just to give you an idea, soluble fiber really, uh, gets utilized in the large intestine. Basically it gets eat, eaten up by, um, the bacteria in your large intestine and it gets converted to, uh, fatty acids, which then get reabsorbed into the body. And uh, this soluble fiber is super healthy for, I don't wanna say super healthy, it is, uh, it helps to foster good bacteria in the large intestine. Okay, questions here. Uh, this person writes, wow, okay, I went home to the Okanagan last week and it is so hard to stay on track when I am not in Vancouver. I was able to keep up with my cardio because my mom has a spin bike but not able to do all the strength training. As for food, I have days of driving to and from Okanagan and I have so deeply connected driving with fast food. It has become something I look forward to with the drive of, oh, I get to go to Tim Hortons tomorrow morning and get some coffee and breakfast. One time I food prepped for my drive so I have that strategy, but I need to be more prepared for future drives. All right. Um, yeah, this, re this actually reminds me of, I remember my sister, this is maybe like 10 years ago or something. I just remember her boyfriend saying, I guess she told, my, she told her boyfriend that I was going, driving out to Calgary to see my brother and I was prepping all this food and her boyfriend was just beside himself because he didn't understand why I was prepping food. He's like, what, you just stop off at Subway. Anyways. Um, kudos for you for prepping your food. 
Um, you know, look for the things that you enjoy. So for example, you said you enjoy coffee and breakfast, so you can still have the coffee. Nothing wrong with the coffee at all. Make the foods that you enjoy. Find the foods that you enjoy. Okay, there are real whole foods I'm sure that you enjoy. Okay, or conglomerations of real whole food. Uh, you know, one of my favorites is, um, I realize this may not sound appetizing, but just give it a shot. Dry oatmeal cooking, cooking, excuse me, cooking egg and egg white in dry oatmeal. I think it's in your, um, in your little booklet here. I think I've got the recipe in there. Dry oatmeal, cook that in some raw or add some raw egg and egg white to it. Okay, mix it up, cook it in the microwave, mash in your favorite fruit, or maybe not necessarily your favorite fruit, but mash in something like banana and or maybe some mixed berries and or maybe a tart apple, like Granny Smith apple, something like that. Perhaps add some cinnamon, maybe add some sweetener and try it, it's super good. I actually like to add yogurt on top of it. Super, super good. It's just stuff like that that's, um, that, listen, I realize it doesn't taste maybe like uh, pizza or, um, I don't know, a chocolate bar or something, but in the realm of healthy food, or I don't really like using the word, but in the, in the, I don't really like the term healthy, in the realm of real whole food, food that's going to provide lots of nutrients, for your body, you can make some good stuff like this, right? Um, my next meal I'm gonna have, by the way, I cook some bison. So I have ground bison. Uh, so by the way, if you eat meat, ground beef is actually really, really good because there's lots of stuff that's ground up together that provides a lot of nutrients. It's not just the meat, but there can be other, uh, you know, there can be some cartilage in there, there can be uh, perhaps tendons, ligaments, maybe some uh, some organ meat in there. There's a blend, so you're actually getting more nutrients in that. Anyways, I don't know if you've tried bison. I'm sure probably a lot of people have tried uh, bison or ground bison. A ground bison. I'm gonna I'm gonna fry up some onion, put some. Uh, excuse me. Fry up some um, some onion with coconut oil. Ground bison, I add a little bit of, uh, my sister bought me the salt and it's got uh, kelp in there as well. So I add some of that. I'll add some garlic and uh, a little bit of pepper. And then I've got some basmati rice made already. I've already got some broccoli made. Uh, I'll chop up some carrot, throw it in there. And uh, I'll mix it all together along with some sauerkraut and it's super, super delicious. Find the foods you enjoy. Find the recipes you enjoy. Eat well, eat hearty, eat nutrient dense food and make that part of your daily regime, okay? Just like when you're going away on, on little excursions like this, okay? All right, um, is it possible, this is another question here, is it possible to do strength training without weights or any equipment? Only things you can find around the home. Yes, it's possible. But just remember that it becomes harder for certain movements. So for example, it's really hard to deadlift without any, you know, without a bar or weights, you know, or of anything that has some decent resistance, right? Um, but you can get away with, um, with smaller movements using stuff around the house. So for example, like um, some arm movements, right? Like uh, overhead tricep extension or maybe bicep curl or some side raises or front raises, or maybe even an overhead press. You know, you can use, um, if you have small weights around the house, that would be very, very helpful. But if you don't, um, you can even use bands. You can use bands for this, putting the band around your your feet, for example, if you buy the, lar the larger loops, the larger band loops, like we have at the studio, like those white ones, I don't know if you've seen them or not. Um, you could use something like that. Um, or even the, the orange ones that we use for the warm up. That might be enough resistance. Uh, when it comes to stuff in the house, household stuff, uh, one gallon milk jugs full of water, that's actually where I started, believe it or not. I used to lift uh, one gallon. 
I had these weight jugs I put in my closet. My mom used to ask me when I was a kid, why do you have those there? I told her it's because I was too embarrassed to tell her why I had them there. Didn't want to tell her I was lifting them. So I told her that it was in case there was a fire. Anyways, you get some decent resistance out of that. You get, how many pounds is that? It's a gallon, right? So that's four liters. Every liter is what, two pounds? So it's the other eight pounds. All right, it's not a lot of weight, but still, you know, something decent for, let's say maybe, maybe some sort of tricep movement, maybe bicep movement, maybe some side raises, maybe some lunges, although it's not really that much weight. Um, there are other things you can do without actually using added weights. You can use your body weight. So for push-ups, body weight's obviously gonna be plenty for a lot of you, maybe even too much. So you have to go off your knees. Uh, you can even put two chairs, stand two chairs, uh, put a broomstick across, and you could do, for example, a wide arm row. Okay, I wouldn't grab it towards the center. It's probably gonna break. But if you're grabbing it towards the ends, you're not gonna break a broomstick over two chairs. Okay, so there's lots of stuff you can do. If you ever do Martina's classes, which by the way, you have access to, you can do Martina's online classes. She has a lot of ideas for this. Um, you know, squats with weights at home, lunges. Sometimes you don't even need weight for this. Just body weight will be enough, right? Lunges, probably body weight might be enough for you. At least if you're, you're gonna do maybe some higher reps. Um, you know, typically when we're talking about weight training though, we're talking about failing somewhere in the, you know, 10 to 20 rep range. Okay. I wouldn't really go more than that. It's, uh, it's not really, I mean, it's still resistance training, but it's not really going to be resistance training catered towards, uh, helping you to build lean body mass and or strength. It's really going to be catered towards more muscular endurance. Okay, so we need, we, need, we need enough resistance is what I'm saying, right? 12 minutes. All right. Um, there are more questions here. Let's save it for tomorrow. And uh, on this day 43, just a reminder that, oh, did I, did I mention the Cowley link is up? I didn't mention that. I don't think I did. You can book your, I got to put it in, in Slack. You can book your next scan, which is this Friday and Saturday, your third scan, your second comparative scan. Book it for either this Friday or Saturday, both in the morning, okay? Um, so on that note, this is you versus you, not you versus anybody else. You may always find somebody who you think is, uh, maybe can lose weight, easier than you or gets away with eating more than you or and you know that may or may not be true but I, I'll tell you this much it's probably not true okay but regardless it doesn't help you so who cares okay you got to find what is going to help you and focus on that and stay in your lane and um, think about all the things you can do to uh, to improve yourself, right? Look for all the areas where maybe you're not maximizing or maybe you're shying away from altogether. You know, I know some of you, for example, still aren't hitting your, you know, your protein quotas. Look for these areas that are going to help you, right, to improve. Instead of, instead of, because listen, we've probably all done this at some point in our lives, instead of focusing on why somebody else is perhaps Improving, not saying you are doing this, of course, um, but I do want to remind you that put all your energy into you, and that includes looking for ways to self-improve, right? Focusing on others or focusing outside of you really doesn't help you at all. In fact, it'll probably just frustrate you, and you'll probably have beliefs that aren't true. Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself and for the love of God, give some gratitude. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. See you guys.